So uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is KR. If, if you don't know my name, though, yeah, my name is KR. This is my first time preaching, <laughs> preaching the good news about Jesus Christ. Praise God. But you know, uh, I'm just going to give you a brief story now. A couple of weeks ago, I was so nervous. I hate public speaking. I hate doing this. Yet, I love the Lord. I love Jesus so much. And now I'm here in front of you guys. So right now, um, Costa asked me to talk about Jesus. Who does he think he is? Is he a healer? A liar? Is he our Lord? Is he our God? He is the God. Let's go to the next um, slide, please. According to Time Magazine, it would require much exotic calculation to deny that the most single powerful figure not merely in, in the two millennia, but in all human history, has been Jesus of Nazareth. And yet, he was born and died in extreme poverty. He held no political or military power. He never even wrote a book. Yet he was called rabbi or teacher. But in just three years of public teaching and ministry, he changed the course of human history forever. So how it is that most of the chief civilizations all agree to Christ's birth as the start of a new era and call it AD or Adam Nomini or after death or the year of the Lord. Next slide, please. Let's refer to that uh, uh, passage. Jesus was God or is God. In the beginning, the world already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. In the beginning... It existed in the beginning, with God, rather. So out of four Gospels in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, John discussed the higher Christology of Jesus Christ, meaning he was being exalted in his divinity from claiming I am, Yahweh, performing miracles and healing, casting out evil spirits and the likes. So we are going to discuss three claims or statements to Jesus Christ. First, direct claims by him. Second, statements by others to Jesus Christ. And the third one, the prophecies from the Old Testament. Next slide, please. John 10, 30. I and the Father are one. John 14, 9 to 10. Don't you know me, Philip? After I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? John 17, 5. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Remember, John 1, 1 to 2. In the beginning, the word was with God. John 8, 56 to 58. Jesus said, um, and you have seen Abraham. And Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, before Abraham was born, I am. So let's recall what is the meaning of I am. If we go to Exodus chapter 3, I am, it's a conversation between God, the Father God, and Moses. So God said to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. And God also said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my eternal name, and my name to remember for all generations. But how would the Jews and Pharisees respond to these claims? How would they find it? In that time, they find it blasphemous. You are a false prophet or a heretic or something, or you're a lunatic or a liar. But because they understood the word I am when Jesus proclaimed the I am. So how can a mere man claim to be God? He's breaking the law. By what? First commandment, thou shalt not have, thou shalt not have other gods before me. But he is God. Jesus is God. And he's, he's performing miracles and healing on Sabbath day. 
What was the fourth commandment? I'm going to paraphrase this, by the way. Uh, no, um, no work shall perform the Sabbath day, the holy day, because that's the rest day. When, Jesus, uh, when God created the world on the seventh day, uh, on the, on seventh day he rested. The Jews were aware of all his good works. They acknowledge his knowledge and miracles. Yet, they can't seem to understand how he, Jesus, is God. Let's venture out more what the others said to him. Um, next slide, please. Son of the living God, Matthew 16, verse 13 to 17. He asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? So Jesus, right? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or some prophets. But what about you pertaining to Simon Peter? Who do you say I am? And here he answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And John 20, 28 to 29, Thomas said to him, Mind you, this is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed meaning it pertains to every one of us. We didn't see Jesus, yet we all believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. So, but it's still not enough to believe that Jesus was or is God. But what about the foretelling of the prophets about him? Next uh, slide, please. Law of Moses, Luke 24, 44. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Next two verses are going to be from As uh, uh, Prophet Isaiah. Prophet Isaiah, uh, take note, he lived about 740 before Christ. So imagine, 740 years before Christ, he wrote this. Seven and four, seven, chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin, which is Mary, will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Jesus lived amongst us. He is with us until now. Isaiah 9, verse 6 to 7. For to us, a child is born, is Jesus. To us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. And Micah, Prophet Micah, wrote these prophetic words approximately 700 years before Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem. 5, verse 2. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrata, are only a small village among all the people of Judah, yet a ruler of Israel, whose origins are in the distant past, will come from you on my behalf. So Jesus is the ruler of Israel. And he was born in Bethlehem. Distant past, meaning what? In the beginning, the world already existed. He is the first and he is the last. So whatever was written in the Old Testament concerning the Messiah was fulfilled by Jesus Christ himself. God's will is shown throughout all of Scripture, whether we are able to grasp it or not. So his claims of divinity allow us no other options but to accept the fact that indeed Jesus is God. But wait, something is still missing though. Next slide, please. According to C.S. Lewis, the author of Narnia, 
if everyone knows what Narnia is, it's a wonderful book. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I didn't read the book, though, but I watched two films. The other one, the old one, <laughs> and the other one is the modern one. I prefer the modern one, though. Sorry, guys. I prefer the modern one because um, Aslan, who's the lion, was um, voiced by um, Liam Nielsen, if I'm not mistaken. And I love the way he uh, voiced it out. It's like it's um, with authority, warm, you know, husky and manly voice. You know. but anyway, I just love it like that. Anyhow, C.S. Lewis is a Christian, yeah? And he said, Jesus is either Lord, a liar, or a lunatic. Let's go to the other slide, please. This is the chart of what he made. Jesus claims to be God. Jesus' claim is true, therefore he is God. And if it's false, either Jesus knew his claims was false, or he did not know, then he's a lunatic. But how can he be a liar and a lunatic? How can, be, uh, how can he be a liar if he's living as a morally good man? healing people, preaching in synagogues, which is the congregations for Jews, teaching with authority, helping out the poor, doing the good works that even the Jews acknowledge, even the people acknowledge around him and proclaiming that he is God. How can he be a liar? And he, if he is a lunatic, why would people follow him everywhere he go? Asking for healing, calling Jesus Rabbi, healer, Messiah, if I, were God, if I proclaim myself, I care am God, would you believe me? You wouldn't. People wouldn't follow me. Yet, in Jesus' time, people follow him. If I proclaim myself in the streets right now, I care am God, would you be near me? No way. I would be picked up by the police, actually. <laughs> But to be honest, right? I mean, what will happen to me? Just for my, uh, let's just say that for the safety of everyone around in public, they will pick me up for sure. No. So it just doesn't make sense that Jesus is a liar or a lunatic. It just doesn't make sense. It's not, it's not logically right, right? And then one story in the Bible um, there, there was a scenario, um, there, the, there is a boat, right? And it's a huge storm, crashing waves. Twelve disciples are there. Some of them are fishermen, by the way, professional fishermen. And then they were so afraid because the waves are just crashing each other, are so strong, that it's life-threatening. But what did Jesus say? Be still! And what happens? The storm, gone. The wind became calm. The waves became calm. Even the nature acknowledged that Jesus is God. Even they uh, recognize who is Jesus. But if I were to say that, I can try, but nothing will happen. I'm going to be such a madman or something, right? Next slide, please. So, how did he demonstrate or convince people that he was or is God? So I'm going to ask that question again. I, care am God. Do you believe that I am God? No, right? So I'm going to say this question. What proof can I give to you to, for you to believe that I am God? Next slide, please. So he showed and demonstrated these four things. One, a sinless life. Oh, Hebrews 4.15. The high priest of ours understand our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. Us human beings fell short of his glory. We all sin. I'm a sinner. I sin all the, all the time. Mark 1.22. The people were amazed at his teaching, the people, mind you, for he taught with what? Real authority but quite unlike the teachers of religious law it's with truth and authority john 5 36 but i have great witness don john my teachings and my miracles the father gave me these works accomplished and they proved that he sent me 
His teaching and His miracles. The way He healed people. The miracles. And Romans 1, 2-4. God promised this good news long ago through His prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The good news is about His Son. In His earthly life, He was born into King David's line. And He was shown to be the Son of God. When He was raised from the dead by the Holy Spirit, He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. No one lived a sinless, a sinless life apart from Jesus. No one was raised from the dead apart from Jesus, except for Lazarus and the girl. But afterwards, their body decayed when they passed away. But Jesus, he ascended with his body. So from the next slide, I'm going to share you a short testimony about myself. How I came up to believe who is Jesus Christ. How I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord. Not just my Lord, but as the Lord, as God. So believe, John 6, 47, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes has eternal life. So does anyone know that word? It's a Greek word of believe. It translates as pistevon, meaning rendered as faith in God, a vow to, a covenant, a relationship with God. So if I say, I tell you the truth, anyone who pistevos has eternal life. Anyone who has faith in God has eternal life. So this short testimony is about my life when I was young and how I came up to believe Jesus Christ. Next slide, please. What does that image pertain to you? What does it look like? Yeah. Crossroads, exactly. So crossroad, I like to use that image or analogy as this one resonates me the most when I started to follow Jesus. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me, Jesus. Next slide, please. So imagine this. In front of me lies a long horizontal line, which I must face to move and see Jesus Christ, experience him. That line represents doubt, fear, confusion, hesitation, traumas, and pleasant circumstances in life. When I was young, around six, I experienced this circumstance in life at the age of six, imagine that. I had trauma. I was constantly getting bullied by what? By whom? By my brothers, by my classmates. I had bruises everywhere. My bags are getting destroyed. I had a lot of marks. I wasn't feeling loved at all. And I was born and raised as a Christian. But yet, at that time, I was questioning the existence of God. Why would I suffer at the age of six? It just doesn't make sense, right? I don't feel the love of everyone that's that my mom's telling me. I don't get it. And then I was going to a Sunday school ministry. It's a kid's ministry. And then whenever I go there, the teachers are rude and mean. It wasn't a good experience at all. I don't get why there are teachers if they're just pinching in my ear or in my hips. How could they be a follower of God? If you find yourself in a similar situation like this, understand that others have gone through the same, or yet some are even worse. Some story to tell, isn't it? Satan will exert every effort to hinder my connection to God using what? These traumas, deceptive whispers, or loud lies. So what awaits me once I cross that threshold? Despite of whatever is happening, my parents still love me. They still share the good news about God, even though I didn't know him. But I was desperate to get out of that situation. I was desperate to feel the love. I was desperate to be freed from that situation. So there's a flicker in my heart 
to know more of him and seek him, embrace him. And says, John eleven forty, believe and you will see the glory of God. So I just kept on going. Took me years to finally cross that road, going back and forth. Seven to eight years for me to believe in Jesus. It says in Deuteronomy 31, 8, Do not be afraid or, dis- or get discouraged, for the Lord will personally get ahead of you. He will be with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. He is with us in our suffering. He is with me in my suffering when I was young. And then I finally crossed that road. Next slide, please. At the end of the road, someone is knocking. Someone is knocking at the end of the road, and there's a door. I opened it up, and there he is. He's waiting for me, receiving him. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in him and eat with him, and he with me. But to all who did receive him, who believe in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. By that time, I felt his grace. I felt his love. I instantly got freed from whatever is happening in my life. My life changed afterwards when I started to believe in Jesus. But uh, about the house, I can't tell yet. It's part of our next series of study next week. Anyhow, next slide, please. So I invite each and every one of you, brothers and sisters, are you ready or willing to cross that road? John 11, 40. Again, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Next slide, please. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his own one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. John 3, 16. So if he was God in the flesh, what was his purpose in coming in human form? We will look into that in the next study. So brothers and sisters, let's pray. Father in heaven, we give praise to you. We glorify your name. We humble ourselves here right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all the things you've done for all the things that you've shown in the world, who you are, truly, that you are, truly is God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading me to this wonderful sermon, to this message, that it's your word, not my words, but your teaching, not my teachings. I humbly ask of you to bless every, each and every one of us here right now. As you have said, when two or three gathered in your name, you are in the midst of us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. We give praise to you. We glorify your name. We humble ourselves here right now. All glory back to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.